Hi everyone, Lori Flasco here and I help organizations while their customers build high performing teams and create cultures of kindness where people love to come to work. And what I'm, um, I'm doing is finding out from really incredible kind leaders um, what, what that means to their leadership. Because I, I'd always heard things like nice guys finish last and you, know, you can't bring kindness into, into leadership. Yet I know some super kind leaders that do. And so joining me today is Hope Bagazi. And, um, and I've known Hope for a really long time because she happens to be my niece. Uh, but besides that, she is one of the most kind people and kind leaders that I know. Hope is the Chief Marketing Officer of Tim Horton. Canada and she was also previously the marketing officer of McDonald's Canada and um, and I know she's got a, a big shoes to fill right now but with that she brings a sense of kindness into everything she does so welcome hope and so glad to speak with you today thank you for having me Lori so nice to be with you um, tell me you know as I said you are one of the kindest leaders that I know and I want to find out from you, what does kindness and leadership mean? Well, thank you for saying that. That, uh, that That's very thoughtful of you. And I'm glad that, you know, my brand sort of, you know, exemplifies that. That means a lot to me. Um, and I think what kindness means for me really in the workplace is it means compassion. Uh, and it means that you're, you're doing the right thing for the business and for your, your team. Uh, and by doing that, absolutely, it means success. I mean, it's, it means success for the people that uh, you work with. And ultimately, that translates into business success at, at the same time. Mm -hmm. And that's interesting because um, I'm not hearing you just say it's about bottom line results. I'm hearing you talk a lot about people, right? Absolutely. I mean, they're the heart of any business. Uh, the talent that you have on your team is really what makes an organization strong and having a strong, productive, healthy organ, you know, group of people working for a business is what is what leads to a healthy, strong bottom line. Mm -hmm. You can't really have one without the other. Mm -hmm. And so I know you, um, you know, you have to make some tough decisions. That's part of your, your work, your role. How does kindness guide or, or lead or does it Im impact or influence that at all? It does. I mean, I, I think you can be kind and still be able to have tough conversations uh, and you can be kind and still um, be able to make some tough decisions in the way of, you know, sometimes people aren't a good fit for a culture or a team. Uh, and I think that's where compassion comes in, is that sometimes it is kind and compassionate to actually have to make people changes, uh, to have tough conversations around performance, um, give people the coaching and mentoring and the constructive feedback to help them get better. And ultimately, if it's not a good fit on both sides, it's kind, even to part ways, even though at the time it probably doesn't feel like kindness very much. I think that is at, sort of at the root of compassion when it deals, when it comes to dealing with people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That it's super important, right? Is it's, it's almost like it's, um, it's, it's part of the driver there. They work together, don't they? It's true. Yeah. yeah. At the time it probably doesn't feel kind, but I do think if it's, uh, you know, that kind of constructive feedback is delivered in a way that's caring, um, that always is constructive and tries to give people examples, tries to give people uh, coaching and opportunities to, you know, improve a skill set or work on an approach. Um, all of that, I think, can be delivered with compassion. And ultimately, even if you have to have a tough conversation or pick, make a tough decision when it comes to a person or a business decision, as long as there's, I think, you know, kindness at the heart of it, um, it certainly is, is, you know, always the right approach. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, you've been part of some big brands along the way. Um, and you and I had a little bit of a conversation around brand and kindness. Can you give yes. me your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I think I've been super fortunate to, and, and probably it was a conscious decision at some point, is to, you know to work for companies and brands that uh, have goodness, you know, in their DNA and are all about doing the right thing. And so I've been fortunate 
uh, you know, to work. I worked at an advertising agency that was privately held, that uh, the owner was a very, you know, very kind individual that permeated the culture. Uh, one of my big accounts was the Bay, and, uh, you know, that was such a, a great organization where I found lots of kind people, and, you know, it was a really good company. Uh, McDonald's Canada is the same, you know, globally, it, it's, it's a very good company and, you know, Ronald McDonald House Charities um, is such an integral part of that brand and, you know, the sourcing and, um, you know, giving back to Canadian communities was a big part of that brand. I was fortunate, you know, to work on some amazing initiatives there. Uh, and now with Tim Hortons Canada, it's the same. Um, there's, you know, the Tim Hortons uh, Char Foundation. Um, has been part of the, the Tim Hortons brand forever. And I think giving back to communities and caring for communities uh, across the country has been a big part of that DNA of that brand. And so it's, it's a, uh, an honor you know, to work for, for brands that give back. Awesome. And you know, you were talking about that kind culture. If a leader was in, in a position where they wanted to really um, you know, make some changes, really wanted to focus on kindness, do you have any tips or ideas for them? What, what might work? We could start. I think at the heart of it, it is about doing the right thing, which sometimes is tough. Um, so I think, you know, making the, the right decision sometimes, you know, re requires digging deep. I think that's a, a big part of it. And always looking to say, you know, what's the right thing to do? What's the good path to take here? Uh, whether that's a business decision or, you know, something to do with a, a person on the team. And I think ultimately it's caring. It's caring and compassion at the heart of it is having the best interest, not only of the company and the bottom line, but how you get there, the way you do that with people bringing them along, making them feel engaged, uh, having them contribute, uh, be part of you know, shaping their own future and, and contributing to the organization, getting them excited and inspired to come to work. Uh, I think those are all things that you know, people, people can learn from uh, mentoring, from you know, watching that be modeled in someone that they admire, from reading books, uh, and then from ultimately just taking time with the people on their team to really understand what motivates them, uh, you know, what's the important and the right path uh, to take on behalf of the team. Excellent. Thank you. Which is a perfect lead in um, to finding out from you um, who is the kindest that you know, or one of the kindest leaders and, and tell us why. Yeah, it was a, it's a good question. And I've been fortunate to work with, you know, lots of amazing leaders over the years and had great mentors but the one that probably stands out for me the most is uh, a, a previous boss of mine, his name is Joel Yashinsky, and he was uh, the chief marketing officer at McDonald's Canada for many years. And he was, he was kind in the sense of uh, compassion, for sure. I, I think sometimes people think kindness means you're a pushover or you're a marshmallow. Uh, and he certainly was neither of those things, but he was compassionate with his team. He truly cared. Uh, you really knew that he cared about uh, the interests of the team. He wanted just nothing but success for the business, but he had such high integrity that it was always about doing it the right way. And he really sort of set that tone, uh, you know, for the, for the culture of the team. And I learned a lot from, you know, modeling the things that he would do. He uh, had very high standards. Um, so it wasn't a matter of kindness equals, you know, being soft or going easy on people. He was uh, very driven, had high standards for the team, uh, but helped his team get there. I think it's, you know, setting a high bar and then helping the team rise uh, to meet those standards. And I think, you know, that's kindness that, that teaches people how to excel. Uh, it teaches you to have goals and, you know, set, you know, clear standards, you know, for yourself and the organization. And he would give a lot of leeway and a lot of rope to allow people the freedom to get there on their own, the freedom to make mistakes, uh, the ability to coach, you know, when you've made a mistake, to you know, talk you through why that probably wasn't the best decision, but what learning could we get from it? So all those things I think made him just an exceptional leader, but the caring and compassion that he had for how to get there and how to get that done was really something that I'll always take with me as uh, you know, best in class. Excellent, I can't wait to speak to Joel. <laughs> yeah, in addition, he's you know, a funny guy, yeah. Uh, real salt of the earth person. And so I think, you know, anyone who would enjoy having a conversation with him, he's just that kind of, uh, you know, that kind of a soul that you, you feel better once you've met him. Wow. Isn't that what we all want? What a thing to strive for. Absolutely. That's yes. fantastic. Well, I feel better that I've met you <laughs> and, uh, and that we've spoke together. So 
thank you so much, Hope, and I wish you um, great success as you continue in your role at Tim Hortons. Thank you, Laurie, and same for you, and thank you for having me. It was, it was great to chat with you today. Thanks.